Hey folks, I'm Brett Kinsella from VoiceBot.ai and Synthedia, and I'm here to tell you my favorite alternative to ChatGPT and to Bing Chat. And there's a reason why I say both. The answer is perplexity. And I wanna give you a quick demo of why I like this so much and show you some new updates because some of those, some of the people maybe have seen it earlier. Maybe they saw one of our earlier videos or our articles about perplexity. They've had a lot of new updates recently. And so let me walk you through a few things. So first of all, you have kind of a layup similar to ChatGPT. We have it in dark mode here, but there's more information on here. And this is similar to what you're starting to see for some of these conversational interfaces for search, where they're putting more things on the homepage. Now here, what they're doing is they're giving you some updates first. They have Copilot GPT-4. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Uh, you can share your searches and they have these popular now, some of these trending searches that they have. Oh, and look at that. They have apps for iPhone and for Android. So you might know that ChatGPT just came out with its iPhone app. We did a video on that a couple of days ago. Well, they don't have Android yet. Perplexity does. And by the way, the Perplexity app, which is a little ahead of the Perplexity Android app, which is a little ahead of their iPhone app, actually has apparently all these features that we have on the desktop as well. All right. So really great. And just to orient you, you have your threads. So some of the things that you've searched for before, uh, very similar to what you might find in chat GPT. You have settings and these other things, but let's get to the fun stuff. Okay, so the first thing I wanna look at is we can do a regular search just based on what it says is the internet here. But if I drop this down, it gives me the option of choosing different types of searches. And these are gonna be customized searches. And let's just do YouTube. So what is the best way to screen record? on iPhone. Okay. So it's going through, it's thinking through the answer and it's going to YouTube and it's finding the things that can answer my question, right? And so there's step-by-step, step, there's different types of variants in here. Oh, look at this. There are thumbnails of videos that you can watch right there. So one of the things we've talked about with ChatGTP is multimodal search. Here you go, multimodal search. This is similar to what we're seeing with Bing Chat right now. They're coming up with like shopping list items, with news articles and things like that, which are showing up. It started out with just text a few months ago. Perplexity AI, when it first rolled out, was just text responses. But look, it's got all of these sources and these sources are videos right here. And I think it's actually pulling this information directly from uh, the transcripts of these videos. The other thing you can see at the bottom is these related searches. This comes up on all the searches in perplexity, very similar to what we've seen from Google over the past couple of years, where they're showing you what other people are searching on, which might be related to this. So that's a, that's a nice feature. Okay. So let's go back to do another or try out another model and let's try Wolfram Alpha this time. So I just did a Wolfram Alpha chat GPT plugin video and it was pretty cool. A lot of people like seeing it. Well, perplexity has this as well. So let's see what we're going to ask them. Now Wolfram Alpha is really good at math. It has a lot of statistical data. So let's ask about GDP. So uh, what was uh, the GDP of Mexico? and Spain between, let's do 1960 and 20. All right, so now this is hitting Wolfram Alpha for the answer, as opposed to just doing a broad general internet search. And Wolfram Alpha is its own answer engine in itself for the types of data that it, it focuses on and really tends to focus much more on statistical data. Okay, so, it's coming back with the information and we have Mexico and Spain. It shows what their GDPs were per year. Oh, look at this. It also provided a chart. Once again, multimodal and perplexity AI. You can probably guess why I like this so much. Oh, and it's giving me GDP at different exchange rates as, as, as well. So now this is not perplexity actually bring back this data. This is Wolfram, but it's a nice integration with the Wolfram answer engine right here. And if we sort of keep going down to the bottom, we can go to the Wolfram page if we want to source it and look at where that data came from and there's related searches again. So I really love those features where you can search by the different types of models. And there's several others here that we can look at, but let's go into, let's go back to the 
first page. And I want to point out this other thing that I just glossed over in the beginning. So this is not officially announced, I don't think. It just showed up in perplexity the last couple of days, this co-pilot GPT-4. And so it's not clear to me if perplexity was using GPT-3.5 before or turbo or something like that, or they had their own model or a third party model. It could have been any of those, but right now they actually have GPT-4 Copilot, and there's a limited number of uses. So you can see that if you want to use this, you actually can only have, I think, five every four hours, and then it reloads. And one of the reasons is it's expensive to run. I'm sure that's the primary reason they want to limit people from using it all the time, particularly since the free users of ChatGPT. GPT don't have access to GPT-4. They only have access to GPT-3.5 Turbo right now. Uh, if you're a plus subscriber, you can access both, but this is a way to get free access to GPT-4 if you want to. So just like a little pro tip there. All right, so if we turn this on, so now Copilot is active, that means GPT-4 is going to answer. And let's ask a question about uh, Star Wars. Okay, so uh, why was the Star Wars so important. And I'm going to actually ask it to use the answer. Uh, please answer in no more than um, 250 words. And I I'm doing that because some of you know that GPT-4 can actually be very very verbose when it comes back. 250 words is actually a lot. I'm giving it a lot of latitude. So this is going to be much longer than your typical perplexity answer because perplexity, you know, originally focused on around 80 word answers. Okay. So what happened here? It's understanding the question. It's showing you what's happening and it's showing you the different sites that it actually looked to for information on this. So now the Star Wars franchise has been incredibly important for several reasons. It's going through. This is going to be 250 words or less. And it gives me a little summary at the end. These are the types of things that we're accustomed to with ChatGPT and GPT-4. Also gives us, again, all of the sources. So again, like Bing Chat, which gives us the sources, ChatGPT now is browsing mode for the internet, but it doesn't give you sources or Sometimes it gives you sources, and I've actually seen the sources be wrong before. It's like early experiment is what I can tell. Bing is actually very good at this. The sources, I, I think I've always, I've always found them to be correct. In any event, perplexity gives sources. It has given sources for months now. Always correct from what I can tell. Uh, and uh, because of the way that it does the sourcing, because of the way it's using GPT-4, it's actually not highly susceptible to hallucinations because it's actually going out, searching for information, it's taking the information, and then it's using the large language model to summarize the information it's pulling. It's not just asking an open question. It's asking a question about data that it went to collect. And so that's actually a really interesting and important thing. Okay. So another reason why this might be interesting to people is that it has these capabilities beyond search as well. And so I'll just open up a, let's do a new thread and we'll say, uh, summarize Star Wars, New Hope. That was the first Star Wars movie back in 1977 um, in the style of Dr. Okay, so this is the type of thing that we would have asked GPT-4 in the past. So it's going through, it's understanding the question. And what is it going to do to come back? Well, look, it's looking for all this information and it's going. it looks like it's going to just generate the response. Sometimes it'll ask, actually ask you a clarifying set of questions. Oh, here it is. It's right here. What are the main events or characters you want to include in the summary? So it's got some examples there, Luke Skywalker, the Death Star, Princess Leia. Uh, anything else you'd like to add. So you can put additional information in there and it'll refine the response. This is a really interesting idea that it's conversational in that it will give you an answer, but it will also ask you to add additional information to potentially make the answer better and more aligned with what you want. I'm just going to skip this for now. I'm just going to let it do what it does, but you should experiment with that. I've been playing with it a little bit and it's really, really good. Okay. So we have a Susian summary of Star Wars and New Hope. This is the first Star Wars where 
Luke Skywalker first became a Jedi. For those of you who don't like Star Wars, just think of this as an objective example. If you like Star Wars, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so in a galaxy far, 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 far away, a tale unfolds. And if you start to read through this, is it great on the Dr. Seuss style? It's okay. It definitely rhymes. <laughs> um, and it says it's in the style of Dr. Seuss at the end. I think it's sort of Seussian, but this, this again is a, uh, a GPT-4 type of response that I would expect and uh, really fascinating. So I hope you check out Perplexity AI so you can get it on the web, you can get it iPhone and you can get it in an Android. And I, I hope you also see that it's not just a chat GPT world out there. There's so many other things that are going on. And I guess my last uh, request to you is please, like this video. We really appreciate it. Oh, and we'll have a couple of cards up here on the left. You can watch some of our other videos where we look at what's going on with ChatGTP in mobile apps, what's going on with plugins and those types of things. So let me know what you think and definitely subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye.